Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Chris here. Um, shooting a video real quick. Um, I said I was going to do another Q&A. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit of a couple of things here. I'm going to pull up my, the Twitter here and get some of the questions that were sent my way. There weren't too many. Um, but a couple of them were pretty goddamn funny. Um, one of them I'm going to mention, even though it was not put in the Twitter... I'm going to mention it anyway. And that was from Rick in Baltimore, who asked <laughs> me the question, have you ever felt the cool breeze on your cock and balls? <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have. And it, it felt good. Man, that's freedom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, hold on one second here. While I'm part of these questions, I'm going to cover some... Uh, Topics that have been in the news uh, the past week. I probably sound like shit. Um, oh, mouse sitting on it. That would help. I probably sound a little bit shitty right now. Uh, quite frankly, uh, I've been having issues with my throat. Uh, stupid thyroid bullshit has been happening. So uh, that has been a thing. Um, I've been dealing with it. It's fine. It is what it is. I can't do anything with it. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let me find my Twitter. Uh, um, actually, ah, here it is. Okay. And hit the wrong button. There we go. And I didn't do it. So, one of the things that's, that that came out last week, and this is just just in the past week, um, AEW had a talent meeting where it did not apparently go too well. Um, you you had a bunch of talent basically saying, "Hey, man, you know." Like Tony Khan got up and did his rah rah shit. And the the Bucks got up and did their thing. And then Kenny Omega decided, for some ungodly reason, to basically rip people, saying he would fire 8 out of 10 of the talent there. Which may or may not have led to a couple of guys saying, okay, well, fuck you, we want out. Um, The rumors are that Andrade... Uh, Malachi Black, I've seen that in more than one place. Miro, and there was one other person who asked to for their releases and said, fuck this. Uh, they want out. Uh, Bobby Fish has apparently been told he's not being renewed. Um, he's been there less than a year. What the fuck? Eddie Kingston apparently smacked the shit out of Sammy Guevara, which I'm not a fan of Sammy Guevara, so I'm not upset about that. But it is unprofessional as shit that he did it. Um, and he admitted as much, and they've apparently squashed it. But the big thing for me is Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter are apparently having a bunch of beef. Now, for me, I am a fan of... Um, don't mind moving the camera. My camera, my phone ran a little bit here. I'm just trying to get to my tweet where I asked the questions. But no, I don't need to do that. Ah, it's going to make me sign in. I don't want to do that right now. This thing is making me crazy. I just want to go to my Twitter page. Thank you. So, oh, I'll get to another thing in a minute. Actually, I'll talk about this because it all kind of goes into the same thing. Uh, Tony Khan's comments, I'm going to cover that as well because I got that right in front of me. But apparently there's so much beef between them, uh, Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa, and Jamie Hayter, that they've basically sent Thunder Rosa away till things cool off. Um... 
they're both grown ass women, and for real, like, this is a problem because you've made Britt Baker the face of your fucking division, and she fucking sucks. Okay? Britt Baker has regressed in the ring to the point where she is not good enough to be worth all the bullshit that she's bringing with her right now. Like, you can't have, like, two people in that type of beef situation, like, working in the same place. Like, somebody gotta go. And it would be Britt Baker. Like, yo, you're a dentist? Go be a fucking dentist. Fuck off. That's how I would handle that. Like, she's not worth the fucking headache. And people are not reacting to her. The more she does her thing, the more they're saying, like, eh. And, like, Thunder Rose has been, like, ever since she got the title, they fucked her over. Okay, they haven't used her properly. They've made her like a background character in their fucking company. She's their fucking women's champion. Which brings me to Tony Khan. Tony Khan said he strongly disagrees with the criticism of CM Punk versus Thunder versus promo time for their title situations. He says if we're speaking honestly, an eight minute promo with CM Punk is going to draw more than an eight minute Thunder Rosa promo. And that's what he books for. Okay, Tony, you know what? On one level, you're right. CM Punk's going to bring more viewers. It's going to draw more. The problem is you've booked your fucking women's champion like shit. So why should anyone give a fuck about her? You've made the entire division about Britt Baker being all the way up here somewhere. Jade Cargill being all the way up here somewhere. And yet... And she's holding a secondary women's title with an undefeated streak. Your fucking women's champion is all the way down here somewhere. How the fuck is she? She was over shit like two years ago. After that match with fucking the fucking lights out match. She was over as fuck. You didn't capitalize on it. Booker of the year. Fucked up and didn't capitalize. You didn't pull the trigger on her when you should have. So when she finally won it, it didn't matter. That's your fault that Thunder Rose is not worth more right now than a CM Punk. She could have gotten to that level had you booked shit right. Booker of the year. But you didn't. And the end result is you see what the fuck happened. You also don't give her fucking time to cut promos. You can talk about her not being the best promo cutter all you want. You can say that all day. She doesn't cut good promos. You know what? I'll agree with that. Her promos aren't great. You know how you get better at cutting promos? Working on fucking cutting promos. You put her out there and you have her cut promos. Eventually she'll either get it and she'll get better. Like a CM Punk did when he first got started. Or like a Chris Jericho when he first got started. Or a John Moxley when he first got started. Or a Roman Reigns or a John Cena when they first got started. And they couldn't talk for shit. They learned. They learned how to react to the fucking crowd. They learned how to react to the people. They learned how to feed off it. And it made them better. Hell, The Rock wasn't good at promos when he first got started. Where's he at now? He got so good at fucking cutting promos that he fucking transcended the fucking business. So did Cena. So they, there's your proof. If you give them a fucking chance, if you give her the fucking time to cut promos, she might get better at it. She might improve and she might be worth the level, at the, get to the level of a CM Punk one day. But you know what's not going to help? Having Britt Baker bear you every five fucking minutes and she's not even the fucking champ. Here's a Britt Baker promo. I'm better than all these other bitches around here. D-M-D. You suck, you suck, you suck. You can't hold my boots. D-N-M-D. That's all. That's a Britt Baker promo. I just did it for free for you. You don't even have to go look at him. I just did one for you. That's a Britt Baker promo. 
Jade Cargill promo. Tony cut the shit. Talks about whatever the fuck she talks about. I'm that bitch. Wow, those are great promos. Those are amazing. They're the only two to get fucking mic time on your fucking show. And you wonder why none of the other women are fucking over? You think that could be why? Booker of the Year, Tony Khan, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, uh, the other big thing in the news this week and the past two weeks, quite frankly, because it's been insane, is obviously the uh, whole uh, situation... With uh, Trump and Mar-a-Lago. Uh, needless to say. And I'm just going to go ahead and say this. Here's the thing with this whole situation. It all could have been avoided by one thing. Um, Mr. Trump. You got all these documents at Mar-a-Lago. Um, we know you have them. We really need you to turn that shit over. Oh, fuck. I didn't realize I had that. Okay, sure. I'll send it right away. Sorry about that. I, it was in my boxes. My bad. And it probably would have gotten let go of. But it didn't. Because... He's a fucking idiot that makes things worse for himself. To quote Bob Seska, the great Bob Seska, Trump always makes things worse for Trump. Not only did he not give it back, he lied about it every turn he got, and then just said, no, it's my shit, I'm not, it's, it belongs to me, it's not even yours. No, dude, it's, it's, the, it's ours, it's the people that belongs to us. We need that back. If you need to come get something to make a write a book or something, you know, we'll we'll you can come sign a form and we'll we'll let you look at it, make notes and shit if you need to. You know, like Obama did when he was writing his memoir and they did that for him and he had to go through the paperwork fill out paperwork and get the stuff and write memos and then turn it back in, give it back to the guy, and they took it back to the National Archives. Which is what happens when you write a memoir. So, that's how that works. So, he fucked up. He lied about it. At this point, there's missing fucking documents. We just found that out today. Like, 43 of the folders, the shit that's supposed to be in them, ain't in them. So, who has it? Where did it go? Um, at this point, like, I know there's all this talk of they're going to wait till after the election to make arrests or whatever the fuck. Yo, perp walk this motherfucker right now because it's not going to get any better. Like, if this were me or you, hell, Reality Winner got, went to jail for that shit. Chelsea Manning went to jail for that shit. Edward Stone's sitting in a fucking Russian embassy somewhere, locked in a hotel room because of that same shit. And this motherfucker's walking free? Fuck that. Go get him. Lock him up. Do it right now. Fuck waiting till after the midterms. It's going to galvanize his base. Fuck him. It could cost the Dems the midterms. No, it's not. They've had so many wins the past month alone that they're they're winning this thing. Like, the Republican Party took what should have been a slam dunk for them, midterm for themselves, and basically fumbled it. They fumbled the bag. They fumbled the bag worse than Gina Carano fumbled the bag by not shutting the fuck up for five minutes and keep making Star Wars money. That's how bad she fumbled. They fumbled the bag. They put the roast stuff through and that turned everybody, even like men were like, whoa, what the fuck? What the, no, we don't want that. What the hell are you doing? Even Republican women are like, no, nah, we didn't want 
them to really overturn this shit. Even re even Republicans are like, we talked about it to get votes, you assholes. You weren't supposed to fucking do it. That galvanized an entire group of, an entire group of people that they underestimated, and that's women in America. You underestimated them. They're come getting droves to vote you the fuck out. You're, then they're going to lose based on that and based on off the political wins of the Biden administration the past couple of months or the past couple of years. All Biden's done is win infrastructure. Biden got it done. Um, Build back better. The uh, Inflation Reduction Act got that done. Um, The gun bill got that done. It's not what anybody, not what we all wanted, but it's a start. The Inflation Reduction Act is not what everybody wanted, but it's a start. To with the college tuition, the college, the student loans thing. It's not in everything. It's not everybody getting everything cleared up, but it's enough to make enough of a dent that it helps people. It, it gives people a lot of help. It basically helps create a new middle class in America. That that's a good thing. And that's a win for him. Uh that's a big win for him. Alright, so with that being said, and those things being addressed, so I I see the midterms being a thing where the Democrats keep the, the Senate and the, they, they gain more in the in the Senate and they keep the House. It's going to be close in the House, but I think they're going to keep both. It's going to be close in both of them, but I think they're going to gain seats in both. I think they're going to keep both. All right. So, questions that were asked of me here. Uh, other than the, uh, have you ever felt the cool breeze on your cock and balls question that I was asked. So, Rick in Baltimore. Is it safe? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it's real safe. It's totally safe. Safe as hell. Um, legit, better Batman actor, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, or Christian Bale? Um, one not on the list, on your list. Uh, Kevin Conroy. Uh, Animated Batman rules all. Um, out of the people on this list, I'm going to go uh, Michael Keaton. He did more than one movie. Uh, Michael Keaton was the better uh, Batman. Even though I do like Val Kilmer's version from Batman Forever. I loved his version. Um, shout out to Ben Affleck's Batman. I did like his version of Batman. The grizzled, bitter Batman. Um, I did like that. So, uh, that's going to be that. Um, another one from Rick in Baltimore. No, really. How big is Batista's dick? <laughs> okay. Um, um, I can't, I can't go from what I've seen. I, I, I can only go by the legend of it. I'm going to say it's at least 18 inches. Um, he, uh, wraps it around, uh, when his pants ripped, when he came back on Raw the one night, you could see, like, the head poking out, because they had to wrap it around his thigh, so at least 18 inches, and you saw, like, the head poking out of the back, so at least 18 inches. Um, however, he is not as big as the Mighty D. The Dark Helmet is still the biggest and best of all time, so... It cannot be touched. It cannot be beaten. I mean, it can be beaten. <laughs> By the right people. But, um... Well, you already know. Uh... <laughs> like Panther Keith, with a question, a deep motherfucking question here. What do you feel is your greatest achievement and your biggest missed opportunity? Fuck that's deep. Um, 
reason I took so long to do this answer, question and answer is because I wanted to think about this fucking question. And I, I'm still not sure. Um, my greatest achievement, um, I would probably say being a, being a good godfather to my godchildren and being a good stepfather to my stepkids. Um, that would be like the biggest thing that I could possibly have done with my life. Um, I don't have my own kids, so kids of my own. So being able to be that person in, in their lives and, and added being like now being a grandfather, uh, <laughs> Yeah, being a grandfather cuz Nora's daughter Hannah has a has a has a has a has a has a little boy. And you know, those are kind of the coolest things that I've probably done in my life. Uh those are probably my biggest achievements, being a positive role model or person in the in their lives. Because growing up, I, I didn't always have the best of influences as far as a role model. Um, I didn't. Um, not not at least a male role model. Like my brother, he was in a, in a place where he shouldn't have had to do it. So I don't know if he took it completely seriously. So um, <laughs> there's a lot that I didn't. I learned from him. There's a lot that I that, that was good. There's a lot that I learned from him that was bad. Um, and my dad being, having his demons. So, I mean, I don't know. We didn't always, he's, he's a different person now and I'm, I'm glad for that. But growing up, it was kind of a much different situation for me. So being able to be a positive force in the lives of kids that I love to death, uh, I, that's my greatest achievement. my biggest missed opportunity um there's a couple there um there are a couple uh one of them not really it's just circumstances just didn't work out just fate had other plans for me um the other one just i wasn't at a mature place to where i could handle it um that would those things would be uh not being able to not being a pro ball player baseball player because I think I would have been okay. <laughs> um, it, because of the baseball accident. Um, that one, obviously, that one didn't happen. So that was definitely a missed opportunity. Um, no fault of my own. Just, like, shit happened. Um, the one that is my fault is not finishing um, school uh, when I was at Towson uh, with you guys. Uh, with you and the guys, like I should have like bared down and gotten my shit together. And I let a bunch of outside shit affect me in a way that I shouldn't have. I should have just not let it. I mean, it's, it's hard to kind of let that not, but let what happened not get to you because it basically like, uh, just to, for full disclosure, I'm going to delve into this whole story here because it it's, shitty but um I was dating this girl my, my second year at, at Towson uh things were great in the beginning and then somebody started stalking her or us or her and her roommates um she already had like issues that were affecting her before that happened and this just put everything turned everything up to fucking 11 to the point where, like, she was, like, freaking out on everybody she knew. Um, including me. Um, it, it got bad. It was just, it was just a bad situation. What wound up happening, um, she wound up accusing me of being the stalker. Um, I didn't live on campus. I was still living at home with my mom at the time because, you know, I was like 19. I was like 18 at the time. 
I hadn't even turned nine. No, I just turned 19. I think I was 18, 19 at the time. So I was still living at home because I started college when I was 17. I graduated. I started school early in life and I graduated at 17 from high school and then started college in 17. I wasn't I wasn't mature enough to handle everything at the time, but she accused me of being the stalker. Um, what was happening at that time? Uh, people were coming to my job at the time I was working at this bar as a waiter. People were coming to my job and like throwing accusations at me and stuff. Um, uh, coming to my classes. I stopped going to my classes because of this, because it was just becoming too much. Um, I was literally ready at a moment's notice to like fight motherfuckers over, over it because it's like, I'm not, it wasn't me. Like people I was friends with, even going for as far back as high school, fucking turned on me. Like it was really, really bad. And it really fucked me up. And instead of saying, yo, fuck that bitch and just moving on with my life and moving past it or trying to move past it, I let it fuck me up to the point where I, 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 I kind of broke. Um, um, like you and like Keith, Keith, you, Rick and Joe know a lot of this. Um, it, 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 it broke me. And it's hard to admit that, but it did. It fucked me up really bad. And if I had been more mature, I would have been able to kind of move past it. And just say, nah, I'm not going to let this fuck with me. I'm going to go about my business. I'm going to stay in my course. I'm going to get through school. I'm going to fuck this. Now, fuck this. I'm going to get my grades. I'm going to get through my classes. I'm going to get through this math stuff. And I'm going to get my fucking psychology degree. And it may have, my life may be, have been different than it is now. Um, so that, that's probably the, between the baseball and that, the biggest one is probably the education part. Cause I didn't fail because I'm well not smart enough. I mean, I'm shitty at math. So that, that played a role in things, but <laughs> my, my shittiness at math, they play a role in my, like, not college, not working out the first time, uh, not getting my degree the first time. I did get my associates later on. Um, I had a lot of help with that, with, uh, like Rick gave, helped me a lot with that. And I'm eternally grateful to him for that help. He kind of tutored me through the math stuff and helped me get through it because I, I I don't know how I would have gotten through it otherwise because I just can't do numbers in my head. I've always struggled with it. I think I have this calculator or some shit, but I can't do numbers in my head. But um what wound up happening there is 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 I, I should have been able to get through it. And you know, being a psych major, I know now or being having the background or learning psychology I know now why things went the way they went. Um, and it basically boils down to this. In situations of extreme duress, um, people who are under or at their breaking point will blame the person closest to them in order to kind of find peace they have to blame somebody someone has to be the target of their of their fucking thing or they're gonna fucking collapse in on themselves so in order to get to that point to where they could be at peace she could be at peace i became that person again not defending it not justifying it but it is, that is what that is. And it's a real thing that people do, you know. It, it's shitty, but it, and it, and like I said, it fucked me up, man. And I wish it hadn't. Ah, 
that that was cathartic as fuck. I really for <laughs> I don't wish I hadn't asked that question, but I set myself up for it. But it got me to think about it. So I hope that answers that question. Um, but those those are the two things that I would say, like as far as um, things that I didn't. My biggest missed opportunities probably one the baseball one the college first go around at Towson and second being baseball and then my greatest achievement is obviously the grandfather slash stepfather slash godfather to like what eight eight kids nine kids now nine kids yeah, yeah, nine kids. Jesus Christ, how did, how did that even happen? Like, I, I still, like, think the people that actually to be godfathers to their kids are fucking crazy because I'm like, me? I'm not, like, the godfather type. At least I wouldn't think. I'm honored to have been had to do it, you know. I will never steer, the, steer those kids wrong, and I'll always make sure that they're taken care of if something happens. You know, I I swore that. You know. And in some cases, I've actually had to kind of do some stuff to keep uh, <laughs> some things going. So, especially with my one God, God family, um, um, That that one I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the story because it's a little bit of a different situation. Um, my oldest godson, he was like my first godson. Um, he changed my life in in the best way possible, and the reason I say that. is he made me want to be a better person than I was when I held him for the first time. Like, even for, for the longest time, like, I would talk to him and it would break me up inside because I love that kid. I love him like he's my own kid. And like, um, one of the things that, that, that happened, the story of me and my first godson, uh, for the longest time before he met his, his, his father, the man who would become his father, for the longest time he called me dad. <laughs> I was dad. Um, so... Having someone call you that, you know, it, 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 it changes you, you know? And one of the things that, that would always happen, I would talk to him and I would kind of get off the phone and I would kind of break down a little bit. Or I would go see him and I would break down when I had to leave. Um, because of the whole, you know, the whole dad thing. When his father came into his life for the man who would become his father came into his life, I had to take a step back so they could build the bond that I had with them. And it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. But in order for to do right by him and his father, I had to do it. I, I I had to, you know. And his mom was mad at me for a long time. She was pissed at me about it. She was like, you know, where did you go? And I was like, I did what I had to do. And if I had to make the same choice, I would do it again. And her father, had to kind of explain to her, like, 
do you realize how hard it is for him, was him what he's probably dealing with right now? And she's like, what are you talking about? And he said, he called Chris dad. And she's like, oh, oh shit. And he was like, and he had to walk away from that because of his father. So they could build a relationship. Think about being called dad. And what that meant to him. And having to give that up. And it kind of snapped her out of her being mad at me. And like. I went out there to visit them. And like I sat down. And I sat with him. With his father. And his father's like dude. I respect the f I respect what you did because I know it wasn't easy. And I just said, dude, I did what I did, what I felt was right. You know, I had to do it. You had to have that relationship with him, with him. And you couldn't do that with me being like right there. It wouldn't have worked. So I had to do what I did. It sucked. It fucking sucked. It hurt like hell, but it had to be done. So the last time I actually saw him, like we were me and my, my now wife and my my stepson, we were we went up to meet him and stuff, and that's where his brothers and. His sister asked me to be their godfather as well and asked my now wife to be their godmother. Because everybody else had like they had been a godfather to those kids or a godmother to those kids has fucking bailed on them. And they knew that I wouldn't do that. And they knew that my wife wouldn't do that. Because I, I know what it's like to have somebody, want somebody in your life and them not be there the way that they should be. And I'll be damned if I'm ever going to do that to any kid in my life. Um, So I didn't. And I gladly accept the said yes to them. And so did she. And so did my wife. And when we were leaving to come back home, I broke down around him again and he kind of asked his mom, like, why does God dad always break down when he leaves? And so we finally sat him down and told him the story about me being around when he was real little and, you know, helping out when they needed, when they needed stuff and you know, taking care of them when they needed stuff and all that. And then when your dad came in the picture, your god dad had to walk away for a little bit because he needed you needed to build a relationship with your dad that you had with him. So when he he breaks down when he's leaving, because he's sad, because he loves you, like you're his own kid. So it's not like you have two dads. You don't just have a godfather and a dad. This man's like a this man's another father for you. And as we're telling him, I broke down again. I'm even getting teary eyed now talking about it. Because it 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 was that deep of a situation and it meant that much. Um Having that, being that for for him and his brothers and his sister, and being that person for my god, for my other god sons, and being a stepfather to my stepdaughter, my stepson, being like, I I guess a stepfather to. To Lenore's older daughter, I I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, being like 
being Papa Chris, as I have been called by Hannah and and Alan and and their family. Um, went out to Utah to meet them for the first time, and that was that was really cool. It was really cool to go out there and do that. And his family was super cool. They were super nice. Um, I think I have a standing date whenever his brother comes to ta- drives to Baltimore that we're going out for crab cakes. And I, I that will happen whenever he's in town. He's got my number. Like, dude, call me when you're in. We'll go get some crab cakes. Because he, he didn't get a chance to get any. So we're going to make that happen. Um, the same offer extends. And I don't think... I didn't get a chance to say this when I was on Break the Apocalypse. So... Shah, if you're ever in Baltimore again, if you're ever in Baltimore again, hit me up, dude. Real talk. Hit me up. We will will not go get crabs. We will get crab cakes. We, We will get it done right. I promise you a good Baltimore experience, my friend. The same goes for like John, B Show, if there ever some weird circumstance we're in Baltimore, hit me up, dude. I got you. <laughs> I got you guys. Straight up. Like, no bullshit. I, I've got you. We will go do the crab cake thing somewhere somewhere cool. Promise. Um, so that there that's that's that whole thing. Um real quick. Uh, I've gone about 40 minutes on this video. I've gone a little bit longer than I planned on. But I wanted to kind of break down like the achievements and missed opportunities thing a little bit more. Because it's such a deep question. It required a lot of explaining on why I feel the way I feel about that. Oh, I'll reference another thing with my, with my stepson. With my stepson. One of the first things I did with him when he was a kid, um, because he he is he is trans, but when he was a kid, before he transitioned, uh, one of the first things I did with him was watch My Little Pony, a My Little Pony movie, and it, it was like I remember like putting up a post on Facebook like I'm watching a My Little Pony movie. What the fuck? Right? But then I looked at him. And he was like smiling. He was just happy that I was spending that time with him. And it was like, you know what? Worth it. I said the same thing when we went to BronyCon when it was here. Um, I didn't want to go. I was like, BronyCon, come the fuck on. And he was like. Only person I want to take me to take me to BronyCon is you. I'm like, why the fuck me, right? I'm like, this is some troll shit. It's fucked up. But I remembered when I went to my first Comic Con with my brother's friend. No, not just my brother's friend. He was my friend too. With my friend Benny. And. Him taking me up there. Going around. And this is when Baltimore Comic Con was a small last thing up at the Howard Johnson's up in Towson. It was literally this little hotel thing. It wasn't as big as it is now. It's like three days. It was a Sunday. You went there. You just bought comics and called it a day. There was no Hall H and all this other shit. It was just comics. Straight up comics and you maybe have a guy selling DVDs or movies or the tapes of movie, comic book movies and stuff like that. And that's what it was. But I remembered that experience that I had gone with him and how he was so giving of advice and of his time taking my goofy ass up there. And I said, you know what? If he wants me to have that, me to be that person, give him that experience, then I'm going to fucking do it. 
and I'm not going to fucking bitch. I'm not going to be upset. I'm going to get make sure he has the time of weekend of his life at this thing. And you know what? He did. And it's those moments that made, made it all matter. Walking around with my, with the grandson, with Sam. Walking around like the dinosaur museum with them when they're out in Utah. Going through the aquarium out there and seeing all the different fish and stuff and seeing him all happy. That stuff means something. You know, you take the time to do those things with your with, with the kids in your life because they're not kids forever. Time goes by so fast. And if you don't stop every now and then to do something cool, it'll pass you by. So, you know, people say it as a joke, but go outside, touch grass. Not as a not saying it to be a dick. Just seriously, just go do it. You know. Take your kids somewhere fun. Take them to a comic shop. Let them experience it. I've taken Kai with me to go to comic shops a couple times. I took him to like a gaming store because he wanted to look at like the game books and they had skateboards. He showed interest in skateboarding. Never got around to the skateboard thing because he didn't really stay interested, but it happens. He's a teenager. What can you do? But those things, those things matter, you know? Make every moment with the kids in your life count. And that's the lesson for today. So, that's going to be the end of this video. Um, so, just to sum everything up, AEW's dumpster fire, apparently. <laughs> um, Trump should have got perp walk like a week ago. Hopefully, it gets perp walk soon. And Batista has a giant dick. I don't know. <laughs> Seriously though, Big Dave, I love you, man. I, I, I'm legitimately a fan. I've been a fan, especially your heel run at the end before when you left the first time. That heel run where you're demanding the spotlight and coming down and wearing like the Doing the the Kanye, the Kanye thing with the polishers, with the pop collar and the stud and the shutter shades and the bubble vest with no shirt, like Batista was on some shit at that time, and it was so great. That's when I I fucking fell in love with Dave Batista as a heel. Heel Batista was the best Batista. Period. Give me what I want, Batista was great. You're not in control. I'm in control. Give me what I want. Like, every time he would, you're supposed to be my friend. Like, Batista, like, Dave, Big Dave, I am a true fan. And I'm just putting that out there. Uh, <laughs> I, did, I, I had to answer the question. It was, it was put there. I had to answer it. But yes. Uh... Huge. <laughs> uh, so yeah, th there's everything for 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 me today. I'm gonna jump off here because I'm gonna go make dinner for the family and stuff. It's Labor Day weekend. I may or may not have a video up where I talk about uh, Clash at the Castle and um, what should I call it? The other one, uh, Worlds Collide. Uh, I may post something about those after, when they're over, probably Monday, I'm off, so I got a three-day weekend, so I'm going to be catching up on a lot of wrestling and a lot of cleaning, because i got to do some stuff around the house, because 
my wife hurt her leg real bad, so she can't help. So it's me doing a lot of cleaning around the house and trying to keep everything in order, doing like 50 things at once. So I'm trying to go cook and make sure dinner's ready for when she gets home. She can have something to eat hot and ready for her and stuff like that. Also, I think I've only had like one thing to eat today, so I'm kind of hungry myself. So I'm out. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Peace.